Well, how about week eight, huh? We knew some things were going to happen. We knew because there were five ranked matchups this week. We knew things were going to happen. I don't think I don't think all six of my highlighted games were going to have some crazy stuff happen in them. Let's get started with Tennessee. Um, you know, Hendon Hooker, he threw three touchdowns. Tennessee put up 65 on UT Martin. I mean, it is what it is. Like, Tennessee blew him out. <laughs> what else can you say? Um, then you got Cincinnati SMU as well. Now, the Bearcats, they had to survive, you know, an SMU comeback because, you know, Cincinnati, most of their possessions in the red zone really didn't do too much. They had to get five field goals out of it. Uh, but that defense with Cincinnati, though, they kept SMU under 300 yards. You know, that was also a big difference in this game. But, you know, the Ponies, they almost came back. They almost came back, but almost isn't good enough. You know, almost isn't good enough. There's also Iowa Ohio State. Now this game was insane from the opening because, you know, as soon as the game started, Iowa, you know, decided to just turn it over. Ohio State then comes right back and turns it over themselves, allowing, you know, Iowa to get a defensive touchdown and everything like that. But, you know, Despite the fact that C.J. Stroud, you know, like like I said in the preview, he, he if he let the Hawkeyes' defense have their way, you know, he'd be rattled. And, he, and I mean, Ohio State was certainly rattled in the first half. Yeah, they still scored, what, 26 points in the first half? But, honestly, you know, Iowa's defense was keeping them in this game. You know, Iowa's defense was keeping them in this game. You had Alex Padilla come in. And he kept turning it over. In fact, Iowa had six turnovers in this game. Just not ideal. Not what you want to see right there. And then, you know, the Buckeyes ratted off 28 street points in the second half. C.J. Stroud with another four touchdowns. I mean, yeah, he threw the pick, but the four touchdowns he threw definitely were not the only difference in this game because, I mean, Iowa's defense could not could not hold up forever. They couldn't hold up forever, especially with this struggling offense. They just couldn't hold up forever. In any case, the big one in this noon slate was Syracuse Clemson, the top 15 matchup. And you wonder, it looked like Garrett Schrader and Sean Tucker were going to run all over the Clemson Tigers because it looked real rough. For Clemson in that first half. They turned it over four times. You know, they couldn't get any momentum going. Syracuse was keeping the ball away from them. But then the second half came. And the Orange didn't do anything. Now, now here comes the fans. You know, talk about, oh, well, there was some bad penalties in this game. And I agree with that. There were some bad penalties in this game. But when you get away from running the football, doing the things that worked, you don't score on any of your possessions in the second half. Like Syracuse had eight possessions in the second half. Did not score on any of them. They Again, they took the ball away from Clemson four times and did nothing with any of them. And then you let Cade Klubnik come in because DJ Uwe got benched. You know, for, you know, the performance he had in that first half. He got benched. He and Will Shipley decided to tear up Syracuse on their own. And, I mean, like, this, like again, like, this is this is all on Syracuse here. Like, yeah, again, you can blame the penalties for, like, maybe, like, 5% of what went wrong. Because, again, you know, it was... A, some ticky-tack calls, roughing the passer, you know, uh, or rather unnecessary roughness. Um, you know, one got called and one didn't get called. One benefited somebody and one didn't. And, you know, you kind of get the story there. You know, refs really just don't discriminate. We, we discussed this already. Um, but this is mostly on Syracuse. And I, I've said this, like, I even said this on Twitter today. It's mostly on Syracuse that they failed. To win this game. Because they should have blown out Clemson. And they didn't. 
instead, the game got stolen from them. And it's disappointing for Syracuse because now you got to go back and you got to play Notre Dame next week. Clemson, they get to sit pretty at 8 0. They get to sit atop the perch of the ACC and they get to watch. They get to watch the carnage unfold because they have Notre Dame after Syracuse does. So, you know, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be intriguing to see, you know, how the rest of the ACC shakes out the next couple weeks, while the top two teams right now technically are playing, you know, non-conference games against Notre Dame. So, we'll see how things go in the ACC as time moves on. In the afternoon, um, well, Sam Hartman put up six touchdowns again. I mean, what what else can you say? Like, Boston College, we knew wasn't going to do anything in this game. And that's just exactly what happened. Like, just completely overwhelmed were BC by the Deeks. Just too much. Too much, you know, Sam Hartman in this game. And then we had... The big ones. The three big games in this window. You had Texas, Oklahoma State, Ole Miss, LSU, and UCLA, Oregon. Now, first off, Memphis to play because I don't know what kind of, I don't know what in the world was going on in this game. We're talking Tulane was up 35 to nothing. We're talking they got a punt return touchdown. They got Ty J Spears, you know, having a 100 yards performance and a touchdown again. Three running backs for the green wave score touchdowns and like you know like I don't know what in the world happened you know that caused Tulane to only score three points in the second half but Memphis was like I right, I right, we we finna try and do something too we finna try and put up some points ourselves they put up 28 in the second half but luckily again luckily Memphis you know you know just didn't have enough they had close to enough, but close isn't good enough, you know, and Tulane gets out of with the win. But in any case, let, let, let's let's get to the elephant in the room. You all know who, which team I'm a fan of, and you already know how this game went down between Texas and Oklahoma State. Like, again, B. John Robinson, once again, stellar day. You know, a buck 40 on the ground, a touchdown on the ground, a touchdown through the air. Quinn Ewers, unfortunately, didn't do too well. Did not do too well. The over again, we talked about this in the preview. You know, the overthrows were a thing. The Texas defense, of course, being a thing, just completely failing to stop Spencer Sanders because he put up 391 on this Horns defense. 391 passing. You know, Texas had the lead at halftime and just squandered it as usual. And then Brennan Presley got the game when he touched down. And again, unfortunately for Texas, like Quinn Ewers, you know, he he's just looked off the past couple weeks. Like he's just he's just looked off. Like he did he hasn't looked, you know, like the guy that carved up Oklahoma like it was nobody's business. But then again, we know Oklahoma's bad. We know Oklahoma has three losses already. But Texas, now they have three losses themselves. Now they're gonna go into a bye week. You know, trying to get some answers because they need answers really quickly if they want to stay in the Big 12 race. They got to catch up to somebody, but we'll talk about that somebody in just a moment. Oklahoma State—they're in a good position right now. They—they—they're they're in a position where you know they have—you know—they still have tests in front of them, but they can get back to the Big 12 championship if things go their way, and things have to go their way. Because, you know, now, now with the way, you know, like Spencer Sanders obviously wasn't injured enough to where, you know, they, to where they could have had a, a, a potential problem against Texas. But Oklahoma State still has big tests coming up ahead. The rest of the Big 12 is looking at them like, I, right, we, we see a team in front of us that's, it's really good, you know. This is a really good team, you know. They can play. They can. They can. They can ball, you know. But they got Oklahoma State has some weaknesses that you know still need to be figured out. Meanwhile, for Ole Miss, um, yeah, that defense did not learn their lesson from the Auburn game because Jay Daniels put up 
five touchdowns on this team. Like, we're talking... The Rebels were up 17-3. I'm thinking, like, okay, LSU's gonna get, you know, demolished in this game. And then, you know, the Lane Kiffin defense, the patented Lane Kiffin defense decided to show up because they were up 17-3. They get outscored 42-3 after that. Like, after, you know, a little bit after the first quarter, you know, going into the second, they were up 17-3. Got outscored after that. Just unacceptable. Again, people had LSU favored to win this game. And boy, oh boy, whoever picked LSU to win this game, you got to be real happy right now. And LSU is tied with Alabama for the lead in the SEC West. More on Alabama in a minute. But Ole Miss, this is disappointing right here. Like, how do you lose this game? How? How do you mess this up for yourselves? Again, number seven in the country. You had all the momentum right in front of your face. And you squander it. Just like that. With that defense playing like it did. Unacceptable stuff right there. Speaking of defenses playing, you know, like absolute trash. UCLA, come on down. Because you didn't learn your lesson from Utah. Oh, what? You, you, oh, what? We, what? You thought, you know. You thought I was going to ignore that? You thought I was going to ignore that Utah also put up a lot of points against y'all? Yeah, that didn't work against Oregon. You know, that did not work against Oregon. The UCLA school of thought with Chip Kelly, you know, just did not come to fruition against Oregon because Bo Nix was out here slinging it. Just when I thought, you know, the run games would be the factors in this one. Instead, Bo Nix decided to show off his arm and throw five touchdowns. Two of them to Troy Franklin, by the way. And I mean, the Ducks had all the momentum, put this game away in the first half, like an onside kick they got, to put it away. They put this game away by the, by the, like by that first drive in the third quarter, because it was like 38-13 at one point. And, you know, after after that after that last touchdown, you know, that put the Ducks up 38-13, I was like, all right, I'm done with this. And so I switched on over to only sell issue after that. And for Oregon, you know, after all that, after all that getting waxed by Georgia in the first week of the season, they reeled off. You know, six straight wins. UCLA kind of disappointing, you know, with the loss and everything. But, you know, it was kind of bound to happen with the way they've been playing on defense. Because, again, you know, UCLA kind of, they, they kind of have a reputation of, you know, making things a lot harder than it needed to be. Like Washington, Utah, you know, yeah, they ran all over Utah. But Utah still put up a lot of points on them. South Alabama, you know, things were not looking, you know, right for the Bruins. And now Chip Kelly and company have to do something because, you know, there's still uh, a looming red and yellow threat. You know, another L.A. team, you know, ready to do battle with the Bruins real soon. And when that time comes, UCLA has to be ready. And they still, again, UCLA still has a good shot to get to the Pac-12 championship, but they need to be perfect next the rest of the way. Oregon, on the other hand, they're in prime position. They need, they also need to be perfect the rest of the way, but they they got to be feeling real good right now. Let them have this moment. Let them have this moment, man. And in the evening, the three games that were offered, Two of them were blowouts, so let's just get this out the way. Like Bryce Young had two touchdown passes. Jameer Gibbs had another TD run. And although Mississippi State had the idea to keep the ball away from Alabama, it still did not stop the Tide from scoring 30 points. At least Mississippi State scored, but that was at the end of the game, you know. I, I genuinely do not know why they went for it six times on fourth down because this offense did nothing. Will Rogers did nothing. Mike Leach did nothing to 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 even, you know, 
to even, you know, make Bama a little scared. Like, do something. Anything. Instead, nothing. Nothing for Mississippi State. Please get out the rankings. You know, you and Texas need to get out the rankings, please. For my sake as a Texas fan, just keep the just keep the horns unranked, please. And Mississippi State, just just get out the rankings. Like how many bad performances do you want me to watch? Because that's another one from Mississippi State. Just absolutely terrible play for the Bulldogs. Alabama's back in good company, you know. They're back in good company with the way things been going for them. So you know. They're not done yet. The Tide aren't. They still got a tough road ahead to get to the SEC Championship. And it's not going to be easy. Again, there was a couple teams that, you know, played today. Yeah, the game that, you know, were, you know the Ole Miss LSU game didn't go, you know, the way Ole Miss wanted. But Ole Miss is still dangerous. LSU, we know, is dangerous. So, you know, Alabama still has a target on their back in the SEC West. So, we'll see. <laughs> I did miss not Mississippi. I meant Minnesota. They got waxed by Penn State. Sean Clifford four touchdowns. Nick Singleton and had another two touchdowns. Sure, Mo Ibrahim got two. Uh, he actually got a hundred yards, not two, but a hundred yards. He had a hundred, you know, yards rushing yet again. But speaking up to the Gophers, only converted two third downs the entire game, just two. Sad, right? I know. Real sad. And in the game that just finished up, that Kansas State TCU game, you know, Adrian Martinez got hurt real early on in the game. Will Howard came in and he and Deuce Bond were lighting up the Horn Frogs. They were up 28 to 10. But remember, this is TCU led by Max Duggan we're talking about here. This is the same TCU team that was down 17 to Oklahoma State. And what did they do? What did that defense do? Shout out Kansas State in the second half. What did Max Duggan and Kentry Miller do? Run and pass all over the Wildcats. And put the kitties away. And put Kansas State, you know, gave them their second loss of the season. And TCU, still unbeaten. They played in the West Virginia next week. And boy, oh boy. The Horn Frogs are in good position right now. Now, the Big 12 race is still open, but TCU is definitely the clear front runner now. So we'll see if TCU can keep this momentum up. I think, you know, I think they might have a shot to do it. I think they might have a shot to actually do it this year. But again, we'll see. How it all goes, because, you know, the Big 12 has been definitely a better conference this year, you know, than it has in some of the past couple years. It's definitely one of the more balanced conferences this year. You know, the quality of the games, I mean, good God, I I swear, Texas, Oklahoma State was four hours plus, but, you know, it is what it is. At least TCU, Kansas State actually was not four hours this time, but. You know, it is what it is. Um, this this TCU team, there's still some questions because again, you can't have a performance like you've had the past couple weeks. You know, where you get get down by a lot and you have to come back because that's not a recipe for success. So, you know, TCU's gonna have to stop letting that happen to them. And speaking of a recipe for success, I don't know what kind of recipe next week is cooking up. It does. It looks like it's the dead week upon us. The dead week. Yes, you've, you've heard this term from me before. The dead week. Talking about college football having you know one of those weeks where there's just absolutely nothing appetizing on the plate. But we'll talk about all that next week, and we'll see. If I can garner six games for us all to watch, you know, I'm sure I'm sure there, there's I'm sure there's six games, but it's just gonna be like how, how do we how do we find those? You know, you know, it, it's gonna be hard to find six games worthy to watch. I mean, yeah, there's an FCS game between two top ten teams going on right now in Sacramento State, Montana, but I don't want to watch that. It's 
It's gonna be eleven o'clock at night, and I'm ready to get ready to go to bed, man. Ready to go to bed because after today and the craziness that happened today, where you know it seemed like we were gonna have you know one of the most interesting days of the season so far in the FPS, it turns out some things stay the same. You know, no Clemsoning. You, you know, Texas is still Texas. LSU, LSU and Alabama, they're on another collision course, you know, if you heard that term before, and, you know, I mean, Ohio State is still Ohio State, they're that good, they keep holding teams under 20 points, by the way, they're that good, so, I still think it's Georgia, Ohio State, now I can add Tennessee to the mix, and then it's everybody else. I, I can kind of add Tennessee there, but I don't want to because of Tennessee's defense. But I'm gonna. But for practical effects sake, I'm just gonna say Georgia, Ohio State, and then everybody else. That's how I still feel right now with the state of college football as we are transitioning into the last month of the season, November. So until next week. That's all I got, and I'll see you all tomorrow to talk some NBA because I've been neglecting to get that video out for the NBA. I've been neglecting it due to work and some other stuff happening personally. So I'll get to it tomorrow. Y'all take care. Have a good night, and hope you enjoyed college football today because I certainly did.